Welcome back everybody, Sign here again. And today actually we're going to be doing a uh, mod spotlight of the Elemental Boost mod by, uh, oh, Lolhens, I believe is his name. <laughs> Dice scroll. But, uh, so, pretty uh, fun little mod. Here's the actually, oh, where is it at? There we go. There's the titular item, the Elemental Boots. Which, hmm, even if hidden accessory, they still throw off the flames. Oh, there you go. And so, what these are is lightning boots on steroids. Or frostbark boots on steroids, I should say, actually. Allows flight, super fast running, and extra mobility on ice. 7% increased movement speed. Provides the ability to walk on water and lava, and leaves a trail of flames as the player moves. So, let's see. Pretty simple recipe for him, actually. You have Ikora Curse Flame times 10, 20 souls of light, lava waders, frostbark boots, and it's done this adventure's workshop, which is this thing right here. Which is actually it's a hard mode thing. But it's a spell tome, a wooden table, ten of any wood, and a tinker's workshop. Oops. Ah. There we go. Uh, what you're seeing there actually was me having some problems with the slingshot because, like, see how my cursor's over here on the right? And it fires whatever direction you're facing. So it's not so good for running battles because you have to stop, turn, fire. However, it is a whole lot better weapon than the, uh, oh, what is it, the blowpipe? And you find this in wooden chests in the, uh, oh, the surface area, I guess, surface elevations. Pretty much any wooden chest, you have a good chance of finding a slingshot in. Then uh, next we have the extinguisher, which has the... Uh, uh, it's got two different types of damage for one, ranged and magic. And also, it's equipable as an accessory. If you equip it as an accessory, you're immune to fire blocks. Now... <laughs> that was fun. does very low damage, but it throws out a hell of a cloud of particles. Yep, and let's see. How far up can these go? Actually, quite a ways. Oh, that would be my map screen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a genius. Did you not include uh, protection from fall damage, unfortunately? Which would be actually pretty awesome. But let's see. Actually, yeah, we got up there quite a ways. Let's go ahead and take those off now. Let's see. So, let's move on to these. Green Horseshoe Balloon. It's the, uh, oh, the fart in a jar. Uh, weighted balloon, pretty much. Or a horseshoe balloon. Which is not in the regular game, which is kind of weird, but it's definitely a welcome item. And then we get to the, uh, the big bundle, or balloon bundles, and the giant balloon bundles, right? Let's just pop up this. Now, your big balloon bundle is the regular three, you know, which is what, Cloud, Blizzard, and Sandstorm. Add in the Fart in a Balloon, Five Souls of Flight. Right? Gives you Quintuple Jump. One, two, three, four, five. Right? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Oh! Wow. No, I didn't. Kill somebody's. So, and then that has a weighted version, which may actually be a smarter move for me to have. So, at least that way, I don't die. And then it also has the Honey Balloon Bundle version, uh, which basically, uh, this, just add a horseshoe, and then this one, you just add the, uh, the honeycomb from the Queen Bee. Now, the Giant Balloon Bundle... Let's go over to that now. Is um, bundle balloons, heart in a balloon, the tornado in a balloon, which is unique to this mod, and the soul of flight, ten souls of flight. Now, tornado in a balloon, you can actually find tornadoes in a bottle on Sky Islands. Which here we go. Actually gives you pretty. It's right around I want to say sandstorm in a bottle. 
or sandstorm or jar, whatever it is, uh, level up double jump. You can combine that with the balloon, of course. And black horseshoe balloon, I wouldn't advise making this if you're going for the bundle. Which in this mod, I'll show you in a second, it's really easy to do. <clears throat> there we go, sorry about that. But then uh, it goes, you know, weighted, you add the horseshoe, then the honey balloon bundle, add the honeycomb. Allows the holder to sex tuck jump. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite as much air as, like, say, the rocket boots, or the elemental boots here. But kill slime. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then boots. Which we can go all the way to space, we can combine the two of them. And, thank god, protect them from fall damage. So, that's the basic movement items from this mod. Now we have a bunch of wings and stuff, but first, the funnel. Something that was just added in a 1.8 version of the mod. Alright, let's talk to Jeffrey here. Hey, Jeffrey. Quit walking away. Uh, funnels. So these are found in ocean chests. And what it is, is you can take a weather bottle, one funnel, and then 20 rain clouds, 10 regular clouds, 20 sand blocks, or 20 snow blocks, right? So, tornado in a bottle, cloud in a bottle, sandstorm, and blizzard. Which you can then use to make the different balloon bundles. Which is amazing, and I wish there was something like that in vanilla. Because you're just playing a RNG crapshoot, trying to get, like, one world that can have all three in a bottle, or three, to make uh, is hard to find. Stupid pyramids. Let's see. Funnel. Uh, let's just go ahead do this out. And we'll get rid of these. Oh, I need cannonballs. Alright. So now we actually move on to the wings. Now the, uh, I'll just pop this open here. So you can see there's actually quite a few different wings in here. Uh, the first one is the elemental wings. I'll do those in a second. First, I want to talk about the phase wings, which I have a set of white ones here. Ow! Stupid slimes. Auto pause. Thank you. See so yeah, the white phase wings? The recipe is a white phase blade, 20 crystal shards, 20 lens, 10 meteorite bars, and 20 souls of flight. Pretty balanced, actually, for a regular wing recipe. Which, they actually have a decent amount of flight time. Let's see, let's get down here. And actually, a pretty admirable horizontal speed. And these things are quick for transmitting your world, you know, left to right. Now, the upgrade to these is the, oh, what, the Spectrum Wings. Right? The recipe for those does require the white phase wings. So, if you're going to make some phase wings, just make white ones. I, the other ones look pretty cool, too. But if you want to upgrade them, go with the white. It does require diamonds, though, unfortunately. But you can make do with that, right? But white phase wings, ten prisms, and five souls of flight. Now, a prism, ten glass, a diamond, five souls of light. It requires an adventure workshop and an anvil, hard mode anvil. But, stack up to 99. Did these finally... Yep, they used to be accessories. They're no longer actually able to go there, though. So, now, these things are a definite improvement over the regular phase wings. Like, not a lot further, but, you know, quite a bit further. However, these things really shine when you start moving left to right. Oh, oh, I didn't know there was a tree there. Whoop. Uh, you can actually... I wouldn't quite say minecart speed, but definitely a lot faster than the boots. You know, any of the boots, actually. Alright, let's get back here. Uh, let's just go ahead and junk those now. Now we have... Oh, where did I put the mat? There we go. Elemental wings. Actually... Let's go with the Terra Wings first. Alright, Terra Wings are a pain to get. Excellent wings, but they're tough. Why? Well, true Demon Wings and true Angel Wings, and then Broken Hero Wings, right? 
Well, we gotta look at the true angel wings. Angel wings, broken hero wings. True demon wings. Demon wings, broken hero wings. So you need three of these broken hero wings. You know, these guys here. Which are a drop. I'm not sure about the, certain about the rarity, but they are a drop from, uh, oh, what's his name? Eye Gazer during the solar eclipses. So, most likely a rare drop from a rare enemy during a rare event. Joy. They do have a better vertical speed, however, than the uh, phase wings do. You can almost reach the edge of space with them, going straight up. But they also have an excellent horizontal speed. Not quite as good as the phase wings. So it's kind of a trade-off of height versus uh, horizontal speed. So it's whatever you kind of, you know, decide on. But they are, like I said, a severe pain to get. Elemental wings. These ones actually could probably be worse to find or to get. Recipe for these bad boys. Uh, elemental wings. Leaf wings. So automatically, there's one platinum coin you need. Frozen wings. Alright. Flame wings. So, rare item, rare item. Ghost wings. Ectoplasm. Not so much a rare item, but very, very dangerous to get. And then 20 more souls of flight. So you're looking at 80 souls of flight for these. Plus a rare drop from an ice golem, rare drop from red devils, and then go fight in a hard mode dungeon plus Montera. Yeah. But they are definitely worth it. Let's come over here where you can see on the little map over here. You can actually hit space and keep flying up for quite a while. You actually have a ton of flight time with these wings. These are like the go-to exploration wings for certain. Horizontal speed's not as great as it is for the uh, of the phase wings. I want to say, like maybe four times walking speed. I don't know. I'd have to actually look at the numbers, but they're definitely. I'm just gonna keep wearing those. I'll just trash that. Definitely worth it. Let's. Oh, I need to turn on a pause off, don't I? Yep. Here we go. All right. So let's throw those down. Now magnets. These are eh, somewhat rare to find in various chests around the world. I can't remember exactly what level they show up in. But it increases the pickup range for items. Let's come over here. Go ahead and equip that as an accessory. This is one of my favorite items, actually. And then, yeah. So we're looking at, I think, like, oh, from here, maybe 14, 15 tiles range. That's definitely handy, especially early in game. Killing things, why not just let the drops come to you? It's not a big of a problem. Uh, okay, let's see what should we go on to next. Frozen Turtle Shell. That one's actually pretty easy to explain out. Frozen Turtle Shield, right? Frozen Turtle Shell, so a rare drop. Paladin Shield, another rare drop. However, it basically combines the effects of both. So now you're looking at, you get access. Defense from Paladin Shield 6 absorbs 20% of damage done to players on your team, only active above 25% life. Right? Same thing there. Frozen Turtle Shell. No, actually, yeah, default defense, but it says put a shell around owner when below 25% that reduces damage. Uh, basically, it's a damage buff. Which, this also, this will give you 30 extra defense when you're below 25% health. So, great for multiplayer. Now you're soaking damage up for your friends. When you start getting low, it, you quit taking nearly as much damage because you're not, um, oh, you're not tanking for them anymore. And it gives you extra defense to be able, to, you know, survive long enough to heal yourself, which is actually a pretty good combination. Jeffrey, you're a moron. Don't walk into slimes. Um, band of stamina. This is actually found in Skyware chests. Interesting mechanic on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. That increases critical strike chance by, you know, 1% after 1 second, 2% after 3, 5% after 10 seconds, 15% after 20. Alright, so after 20 seconds of not, and then the timer is reset, I'm sorry, after dealing or taking damage. And then you got a 7 second cooldown after dealing damage. Oh, that bunny just died. So what it does is if you're like, say, I can really see this coming in handy for like PvP. Especially with like the Shroomite set. Ow! Stupid slime. But, you know, say, 
Don't hit anything for 20 seconds. You get an additional 15% to your uh, critical strike chance, right? And then you have the Band of Anarchy, which is made from the Band of Stamina. Well, I'll just pop the speed up for that real quick. And Band of Anarchy it is an adventure emblem, Band of Regeneration, Band of Star Power, and then the Band of Stamina. And it has the effects of all those. Oops, here we go. Increases critical strike chance over time, similar to this. It's just too big to fit in the tooltip, on top of everything else. Increased life and mana regeneration, and increases damage by 12%. And the cool thing is, these two stack. So if you can wait, you know, 20 seconds, you'll get a total of plus 30% to your crit chance. Plus, let's see, oh, what would we go for? Um, like, Eye of the Golem? 10% chance, right? I think it's like the Destroyer Emblem? That's another 8% right there. So we're looking at what? So 30, 48 percent increase in crit here. Uh, what's something else that uh? Get rid of that. Something, another accessory that buffs crit chance. Hmm. Oh, like say if we're uh. Let's see. Yeah, that will do it. Oh. Sniper scope. Another 10 percent to your crit chance, right? Now let's say, uh, let's get out of here. Let's say sniper. Oh. Say sniper rifle now. All right. Well, gotta wait for these to build back up now, unfortunately. And let's just pop out the shroomite armor, right? So. Breastplate, leggings, and the mask. There we go. I am now invisible. Uh, puts you in stealth, increasing range ability, and reducing damage, or reducing chance for enemies to target you. Okay. Doesn't really say exactly what range ability is. Helmet gives you 5% range critical strike. Breastplate gives you another 13%. And then another 7, so we're looking at 25, say 35, 65, 75, is that 83 percent on top of whatever the Shroomite bonus is, which doesn't show up as a buff, unfortunately. So we're now looking at a critical strike chance of 112 percent with the uh, sniper rifle. Let's see, let's get some bullets here. Oh, what should we get here? I think Venoms are the strongest, aren't they? Empty Bullet, Golden Knight, yeah. Yeah, Venoms are, I think are the strongest. So, okay, here comes the slime over there. 640. 48 damage. That's without reforging these. So if you're going to be using a sniper rifle, I like those items. Those items are nice. Let's get rid of some of this stuff now. Alright. And go ahead and toss these out because we're done kind of showing off of those. But yeah, the 112% start, uh, critical strike chance. That's very nice. And then say. Put menacing all that, you get an additional 20% damage. Yeah. Can get rather sadistic after a while. Alright, Night Sky Necklace. Night Sky Necklace. Simple, it's the moon shell. Turns werewolf into or turns holder into werewolf at night and a merfolk when entering water. And then a star veil. Causes stars to fall, increases length of invincibility after taking damage, right? Just combines two of them, makes it only take one slot up. Might make it so I'd actually use like a star veil, because usually I don't. On a similar vein, we have the fiery shell, which is Neptune shell plus a lava charm. Basically, it lets you turn into a mer merfolk in water, or in not water, in lava, and provides 12 seconds of immunity to lava. Hmm, purple butterfly. So, 
Obsidian skin is a little more effective for duration, but it doesn't let you swim in the lava. This does. And then we got, oh, uh, the magma gear here. So, magma claws, right? Pretty simple. Fire gauntlet, regular vanilla item. Uh, plus climbing claws. Right, just combines the two. Nothing huge. You got your magma climbing gear, which is magma claws plus shoe spikes, or fire gauntlet plus tiger climbing gear. Easy enough, right? Then we have the ninja gear, which you can either go flaming ninja gear, one or two. The first one is fire gauntlet plus master ninja gear. Or the second is the magma climbing gear plus the tabi and the black belt. Hey, at least just adding fire into the standard recipes for the ninja gear. Now this is kind of some fun stuff here. Well, let's just go ahead and get rid of... Let's put these things right there. Alright, you notice that it doesn't really show up much on your character, but you do throw off light from flames. You have, you know, the regular Tabby Dodge. Let's see. And you should have the regular Tiger Climbing Gear ability to just latch onto things and hang on. Like, boom, so. Plus, you, know, you have the, uh, oh, the black belt's chance to dodge attacks. And, at a benefit, you constantly emit light. Definitely worth it, right? And even if the accessory's not visible, you still throw off light. Awesome. Alright. Illuminate star necklace, illuminate heart necklace, and an illuminate pearls necklace, right? All come from these illuminate pearls, which are dropped by pretty much every hella creature. I want to say, I know for certain, like, Luminate Slimes and Bats. Uh, I think maybe any creature in the Underground Hallow has a chance to drop them now. Uh, mod author did mention that he was increasing the drop rates of them. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh. So, what can we do with these? Well, Illuminate Heart Necklace is the Sweetheart Necklace plus the Pearl. And what that ends up doing is, instead of these, it releases an Illuminate Crystal whenever you get hit. Plus, you get the Panic buff, which is increased movement speed. And also, whenever you get damaged, applies the Illuminated buff, which means it's a short-term slime potion. And it refills your health when you die. So instead of restarting with 100 hit points, or 100 life, you have, you know, full 500. Let's see. Let's go ahead and equip that. Go ahead and fly up here. Oh, okay. take that off. Let's say there, and fall damage. Right? Splat. Sweet. Life zero out of 500. And respawn eventually. That's the worst part about this game. 500 health. That will happen, you know, without this accessory on, like, PvP servers. Let's take that off. Uh, simply because that way you can't, it's harder for you to get spawn camped. Single player, that's awesome, especially if you're having problems like in a solar eclipse or one of the moon events, where die, respawn, and pretty much like insta-kill. That should help avoid that. Now the illuminated star necklace, or illuminate star necklace, sorry. We have the star veil plus a pearl. And I can tell you, these pearls aren't actually terribly rare in the underground hollow. So you're not going to spend like an hour or so hunting for one. Not like you would for the Star Veil if you get unlucky. But, oh, let's see. What was that? Here we go. Uh, star Necklace causes stars to fall, lengthens, or increases length of invincibility, and applies Illuminated buff after taking damage, plus it refills your mana when you're dead. So, mage character, run out of mana, die, respawn, full. Awesome. Now you can combine the two of them together. Illuminate Pearls Necklace. Alright, all those effects. I mean, everything. Causes stars to fall, increases length of invincibility, releases illuminate crystal, increases movement speed after damage, applies the illuminate buff when damaged, refills your health when you're dead, refills your mana when dead. All of that. I don't know why it says damage 25. So does the heart necklace. I have no idea. But definitely a great... I would use this except for it starts with the panic necklace and I hate the panic effect. I don't also need to be all over the screen after I take a hit. That's my main concern about that item. Other than that, it's a freaking awesome item. 
All right, now onto the weapons. Well, actually, first, we have a pet. Wand of the Frostline. Actually, a pretty common item to find in various chests throughout the underworld. Summons this cute little frost bunny slime. Doesn't do anything. Uh, he will take damage ish. He'll show damage numbers if he's hit, but you can't kill him, so. That's kind of a thing, right? Little Bombard. Let me get rid of that. Alright, look at this thing. You know, range damage 10. It's sold by the pirate NPC in hard mode. 8 gold, right? Freaking expensive for carrying a weapon. Except for the fact it shoots cannonballs. Which have a base damage of 300. Which also explode on impact. 306. It does have kind of a strange arc, but what do you expect? It's a bombard. I mean, it's... It's basically a mortar. <laughs> Let's see. How long it take to come down? And the good news is... Yes, it explodes. No, it doesn't hurt you when it explodes. It's even better. Poison Bubble Wand. Real simple, a little item to make. Bubble Wand you buy from the Party Girl, right? Neat little toy. Well, combine that with a Poison Staff. And you get this wonderful thing. Now, one thing to be careful about, or to pay attention to anyway, is, well, Bunny! 50 damage. Uh, each Terraria map has its own predominant wind. Uh, right here, it's relatively still. But the bubbles will fly in the direction of the predominant wind. So if you get a map with a stronger breeze, you'll see them just like trail off to the side of the map in no time flat. These ones are really rising relatively straight. But it's also great if you're being chased by something. You can lay down a minefield. Love that part. But yeah, each swing also does multiple bubbles, and each bubble hurts. So, something else to think about. And a whole whopping five mana per swing. The amount of shots on top, crappy range, I will grant it that. But for the amount of shots you get for five mana, that's actually really nice. It doesn't, I don't know if it poisons or not, because usually it tends to kill things right away. Uh, Illuminate Staff. <clears throat> this, actually, is another incredibly cheap recipe. Especially for what it does. One meteorite bar, one illuminate pearl. At Inventor's Workshop, which I have you standing on. It fires off. Um, illuminate shots, I guess would be the best way to put it. What's it called? Shoots an illuminate crystal. Now, if there's no enemies on the screen, it is one of the slowest weapons in the game. Alright, now to kind of get this effect going. Auto pause. Let's say we had a slime show up here. Right, see that guy? <laughs> as soon as there's an enemy around, they move extremely fast. It will not target critters, and it will only target enemies it has a line of sight to. Like that guy. But other than that, it's slow. Good news is, though, however, okay, it takes 12 mana. Does 40 damage, but like you can see here, I'm stacking up all sorts of shots. Let's say, let's get something in here with. Oh, a lot of hit points. Not something that'll kill me right away, though, but. Um, crap. Hop and Jack. And they will keep hitting the enemy until it's dead or they've reached. I think it's an X time, and then they despawn. It's either a time or a distance, and I don't know which one. Ice Storm! Alright, awesome little thing. Let's see. Frost Core, so Frost Golem, but if you're going for the Elemental Wings, Frost Cores are a guaranteed drop. So, one Frost Golem, you're good. And a Spell Toe. Easy enough, right? And what this is is an icy shotgun. Magic damage 35, mana cost 2. Right? Shoots ice crystals. Alright, pretty cool so far, right? And one thing that's one shot, 
fires off a god awful amount. Oh, those little ice daggers. So, crowd control, anti boss. Oh, no, it also causes frost burn. So, that's even good against, like, say, the destroyer. It's like the only thing he's affected by is frost burn. Definitely something to keep your mind on. And for two mana cost, even if it's your crappiest weapon or you're doing a melee character, a ranger, or whatever, just keep this on your bar, two mana, pop a frost burn on things, let it do some damage over time while you're kicking its butt with other stuff. Alright, Space Rifle. I love the sprite for this too. It actually looks like Space Gun got turned into a rifle, right? And it actually says Space Gun Mark II on it. Recipe for this thing is actually really, really cheap. Space Rifle. Oh, well, I wouldn't say really cheap, but for what you're getting, it is. Space Gun, illegal gun parts, 20 bars of meteorite, 3 lenses, 20 crystal shards, and a ruby. So if you're going to the Hallow, like, say, for, oh, I don't know, Illuminate Pearls for different things, 20 ice shards. Takes no time at all to get. The only thing I can really see being a problem is rubies, and that depends on your RNG. Oh, what does this thing do for base damage? 50 magic damage. This is without any reforges or anything on it. 106 on a crit. Okay. Oh, I was actually pretty lucky. It's only 4% crit. It fires off a lot of shots relatively quickly. And actually, it takes quite a while to go through your mana. Oh, that's what? 4 mana per shot. However, this thing can be upgraded into the space laser. Magic damage 100. Speed insanely fast. Mana cost 2. Shoots a continuous laser ray. Which is space rifle, star cannon, meteorite bar, prism, 30 crystal shards, and an emerald, right? Hey, bunny. And one thing you will notice, it does go through blocks. It will burn your mana, you know, out insanely fast, which actually I am going to... There we go. No mana usage. Yes, you can actually fire through blocks. As long as the end of the barrel isn't inside of the block, it'll punch right through. Pretty much anything. Uh, off camera, I use this for a destroyer kill. It took six seconds. And that's also due to so I think more to the fact of my frame rates suffer severely when using beams like this. So this is not happy for frames, right? I just dropped it to two frames per second. They come back right as soon as I, you know, quit shooting it. One thing I have noticed though is it does not break the grass. So it's not exactly a lawnmower, but. I don't think you really need it to be, right? Next, one of my favorite weapons, though. Oh, the Spiky Ball Blaster. This does break glass. Or grass. Glass. Do I not have that? Yeah, I don't. I thought I did. Alright. Let's get back over here real quick. Uh, found in golden chests throughout the world. Range damage 10, not great. Speed very fast, no knockback. But it shoots spiky balls, which have an additional 15 range damage. Flat. And have the added benefit of being persistent. And these stupid spiky balls, if you get the right terrain, will go forever, because they just keep bouncing. They won't keep going this way, because, well, there's that giant tree here in the way. Right? Let's see how far I can find some now. <laughs> some there. Some over here. Wouldn't be surprised to find some actually down here, but I don't have any torches or anything to go check it with. Yeah, they... They bounce like crazy. Especially with the velocity they leave this gun. I mean, it's unreal. And this would actually be useful even in hard mode. I, expect, I mean, you can just pepper an area of these things. 
You got Caltrops. I would say like a minefield, but they don't blow up, right? Uh, ammo for these things are dropped by the goblins, of course. You know, during the invasion. Or you can actually buy them from the goblin tinkerer as well. But yeah, and like say, oh, let's auto pause on. Got a cluster of, I don't know how many right there. Um, let's get a couple zombies, right? And you just kind of sit back and wait. I mean, they're they're great, and this is definitely an easier way to put them exactly where you want tactically. I don't know what the heck I was killing over here. Oh, slimes. Thanks. Hooray! Yeah, you can kind of hear them breaking grass and stuff off in the distance still. And actually, I think that pretty much will wrap it up for this mod spotlight. Uh, let's see. Double check real quick, see if I missed anything. Um, doesn't really look like it. Uh, one thing is, the weather bottle has not been implemented yet. This is still actually a pre-release of 1.8, so that's going to be the next thing added. So, unfortunately, can't give you details on the recipe for that quite yet. But it'll be in the game soon, and I imagine it'll be easy to find the recipe for it, just pop a jar in your inventory, and, or your guide's thing, and go from there. There we go. Dead. Um, yeah, I think that was everything, actually. So, you enjoyed it? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll keep doing these. And this is Sign, signing out.